Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah Pavin. I'm an Olympian and a beach volleyball world champion and a longtime professional indoor player. <sighs> this match is a journey. Is this the third episode that we're on it? I'm here for it. I'm all about that. I'm soaking this in so deeply. <sighs> okay, we're entering the third set in episode 23, the point that changes the momentum. <sighs> Last episode, we got Oikawa's backstory. Now, we all know that that didn't change my opinion, but then I had some of you reach out and be like, oh, don't worry, you're still gonna really like him, and some of you were like, you're right, he's a big jerk, you're never gonna like him, so now I'm a little confused. <laughs> um, but as it stands right now, I do not like him. And little baby Kageyama with those big blue eyeballs was flippin' cute. Um, he is changing. Him and Tsukushima having a little bit of a relationship moment. That duo together is gonna be fierce. They are gonna cause teams a lot of trouble. I, from start to finish, just seeing Kageyama try so hard and like, be a better teammate, like get confused when Tanaka was trying to give him a high five, that was concerning, but also cute. Um, and just like, it warms my heart. Our baby is growing. So we're heading into set three. I don't know, I don't know. I wanna believe they can do it. I'm gonna put all my good vibes into this episode and this set for Karasuno. Here we go, season one, episode 23 of Haikyuu, the point that changes the momentum. I'm partially heartbroken because there's only two episodes left in season one, but also full of joy because we've still got some more seasons, so it's not done yet. Okay, that was a very, very short intro. Wasn't expecting that. Let the games begin. If he fires that across the whole net, I'm gonna lose it. ボールを目で長く追ってるようならいつもそこただ突っ込んでくる時は変わったぞ常識に10番自体を見るのがいいかはい10番はねも悪魔に響ちゃんは優秀な王とそれを忘れないオッケーはいよしはい<笑> ラリー続くな。守備の努力も平均値では正常のが上だろうけど。ヘイト。こっちはセブルとデリベロの守備力が高いからな。当たった。セッターがレシーブ。トスを上げられない。攻撃単調になるぞ。多分レフトだ。
Serve receive, defense, generally speaking, except for Noya. Okay, better. Um, Oikawa runs a better overall offense, but I think Kageyama is a better pure setter. I feel like that was a very bold statement. And I feel like I'm gonna have to analyze that more later, but not sure. Also, they did a really good job of explaining the libero rule. If that line is called the attack line, um, in the US they tend to call it the 10 foot line because it's 10 feet from the net. But if the libero is going to set with his hands, his or her hands, he has to be standing behind that attack line for the attackers to jump. If he jumps from behind the attack line and hand sets and lands in front of it, that's okay. That's what we saw here. But if the libero's feet are on the ground in front of the attack line, they have to do a pass. Like they have to set it underhand if the attackers want to jump. That's a very important nuance of the libero position. And I will say the libero is usually the second best setter on the court, especially at the higher levels. So I think that's a really fun fact about the libero position is we usually think of the libero as being a really good serve receive player, a good defensive player, but a very key skill that a libero has to excel at is setting. And normally people don't really think about that, but usually when a setter plays defense or digs a ball, teams want the libero to set first because so that there are three attacking options at least. Oof. Nice dig. Wait, what? That looked like a, a big double, but that was a good save. Oh my god. I love that. Takeda is just like the Yoda of the team. He just like picks up all these nuggets and shares them. Yes. Oh. 
cross court, cross court. Where was the blocker? Where was the left blocker? Please don't tell me that that little hand you saw going burp was the left side blocker. Regardless, I'm very proud that he nodded and just hit it straight. Um, question. The final set, are we playing to 15 here? Because it was 14-12, so I'm like sweating a little bit. I'm assuming that they're gonna go past that because like, I mean, the episode just started, but most deciding sets go to 15, so I hope I'm wrong. Maki. Oh, nice swing. What? I thought that was down. Other side, other side. Yes. That was a sick cover. Noya. He loves it. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, he looked. Dump. Oh. Oh my gosh, I did not see that option coming. That rally was intense. I know that Kageyama's kind of freaking out a little bit that he almost got his set, like his set was gonna be red and then he not a, potentially could have been blocked with that double block. But as he was setting, did you notice that he like looked like that? As setters get comfortable, that's what they do every single time they set the ball. They like take a glance over in their peripheral vision to see the blockers. And he saw the two blockers go that way. Sure, he had a plan, he knew who he wanted to set, but by being like adaptable and being able to adjust like that, he took a look, saw both of them going and knew that the middle was wide open. Oh. And I am so upset that I didn't even think about the pipe. I should have known. That pipe has been such a weapon and I saw he's been crushing it. Also, can we remember back many, many episodes ago when Noya said that all he was going to focus on in the off season was his covering because he just couldn't forget about it? That pancake cover he did, when your hand's like this, the floor is here and the ball, see it's really flat, it's called a pancake. That pancake cover he did, outstanding. I love it. Not sure how they stole a point. It was 14-12, but I'm, I'm here for it. I'm okay. Oh, 
目より断然ラリーが続くようになってるしんどいだろうなでもいいな、うん、どうする10番のあのブロードは<笑>あのブロード<笑>捨てようか Just do it. How are we gonna do it? Just do it. Oh my gosh, I need to take some breaths. I'm like passing out. I love that head whip. Swing down the line. Oh, the little barrel. I don't know. Tip it. Okay, so they did talk about it. Shocker. Um, well, I was wrong. Some, yeah. So what they were saying is sometimes the block will take space or they'll just like leave it and it's better for the defense to play because when a hitter is in a really good rhythm and they're getting um, a lot of attacks like around the block or off the block sometimes the block might honestly just be more of a hindrance than anything um, so the block will take a specific spot and like leave a big lane open for the defense just to bait the hitter to hit that way and dig so it looks like that's what Seijo did here Is he the only player on his team that serves though? No. No. That's a great get. Oh. 
Oh my gosh, I'm stressed. Okay. You can probably hear my breathing in the microphone. I'm so worked up. Oh my god, is it Yamaguchi? Yes! He's been practicing his float serve. Mostly pure luck. If it's luck, Yamaguchi doesn't know where it's gonna go. How the heck is the other team gonna know where it's gonna go? That could be the strategy. I'm worried that Yamaguchi is going to poop himself. He looks very sick. <laughs> Poor thing. But I have been like kind of like thinking this was gonna happen, then it didn't like 20 million times. So the fact that our boy Yamaguchi, who has been doing the extra work, it's coming because like Hinata misses a ton of serves when they really matter. So I think that this is a really good choice. I hope. Oh. <sighs> No pressure or anything. Oh my gosh. You guys. I have chills. だいぶ的じゃねえか、山口。はい。一発いったね、山口。大佐。な、大佐。記録に行けよ。朝日。記録に分かった。おお、このタイミングを誰だってビビるわ。これが高校初試合初サーブとか心臓とか。落ち着い
that wasn't supposed to happen. And now I'm upset. But maybe it did kill Seijo's momentum and now Kirasuna's gonna get those points back. And if not, I need to call the writers of the show. おれもだよ。ピンチに突然出されて失敗したら引っ込められちゃうんだ。なんかおかわいそう。ピンチさんはそういう仕事なんだ。その一本に試合の流れと自分のプライド全部持っててる。そんで正しく失敗したら。でも
Okay, I just had to go wipe my eyes because I legitimately was crying. <laughs> I still have goosebumps and it's been like constant for like seven minutes. You guys, I, I, I'm speechless. That sequence after Yamaguchi missed his serve changed my life. Like the passion, the fire in their eyes, they knew that they needed to like grind for every single point. They couldn't let up for a second. Like their whole demeanor changed, their confidence, their like spirit, like, oh. And then that one-handed set. <sighs> Oikawa, Kageyama, head to head at the net. Oikawa thinks that he's got a block straight down and Kageyama comes in with the one-handed. Let me tell you, I've played with only a couple setters who could do that and that set is a thing of beauty. And the fact that he busted it out, first year in high school, probably has never done it before. Match point, biggest match of his life. Wild. I am so happy. I mean, they still have to, it's 24-24, they still have to play the last couple points, but like, to see that grit and that determination and risk taking, you guys, I could go on and on about this forever, but I'm gonna watch episode 24 like right this second. So, chef's kiss to that episode. Gosh, a girl, literal crocodile tears falling out of these eyeballs. Okay, leave me comments. I hope you guys love this episode as much as I did. I was not expecting this level of emotion and intensity. Um, leave me all the comments below, please, I need this. Um, and I would be so excited if you would like this video, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned because episode 24, we are wrapping up season one next episode, you guys. I'm not sure if I'm emotionally stable enough to handle it, but I want you to be here with me. So stay tuned for our next episode coming soon. Bye.